Hello there, welcome to Splodgy Apologetics. Thanks for joining us. I hope you're ready with your Bibles and your notebooks. Now, when you switch on your TV or your radio, it won't be long before you get a news bulletin. And usually the news starts with main, the big news. It may be a war or rumours of wars. It may be a disaster of some kind. It may be pestilence disease, pandemics, it may be something like that. It may be government news about what they are planning to do, the things that affect our everyday lives. And then at the back end of the news, we get stories about somebody famous that has died and they look and celebrate his career or her career. Then there'll be something about sports, team or a person who has won a tournament or lost one. Or it might be a cute story about pets or a long time reunion, something like that. And in between all this, we get adverts. And the adverts tell us that we need a particular product or we need a certain service in our lives. We need something to eat, buy from this outlet. We get offers and such like that. goes on and on. And all these things, pertaining to this life. If we don't buy their stories, our lives will mean nothing in our life. We could die. It's all there to scare us or prepare us. Just as the ad saying that we are no good, we're not as good as our neighbours if we don't have this product. We can even research about the quality of products of services that these people provide us from the ads. And similarly, we have the Bible. As Christians, we have the Word of God, the terms and conditions of life. We can easily find out the truth so that whatever has been said, does it line up with the, our worldview from the Bible, what God says. That's always what's most important, what God says above what man. Let God be true and every man a liar. That's what the Bible says. And we check can check out what anyone says, not just on the news, but in the pulpits especially. And we can test it out with the word of God. And we should do. We should know it well enough to know that, oh, that doesn't sound right. We shouldn't just rely on what is being told us. We should check it out. Does it ring true with God's word? The four Gospels are narratives a portrait of the life and death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They're not portraits in the sense of what he looked like, but rather what he said and what he did. For accurate and good representations from eyewitnesses of what he said and what he did. They are reliable. There is one good news, the gospel, that we are all sinners, but God provided a way through Jesus Christ, God became man in him and he died, for, he lived a life telling us how to live and showing us how to live and he died, rose again, died for our sins, your sins and for mine. So the choice of life or death is not just for now, it's for eternity. What we choose to do has consequences. In the moment of the fall, we see in the first 11 chapters of Genesis that there were consequences of people obeying God and disobeying. Although Satan, the devil, is the God of this world, he is limited. Don't give him the credit that he's all powerful. He isn't. All he can do is entice us, suggest to us, and tempt us. That's all he can do. But God has given us a free will so that we can choose. We can choose to love God, trust him and obey him. Or we can do it ourselves, try to live by our own righteousness and do our own thing, which is basically living for the devil. Because of it, we are under the wrath of God. Adam and Eve had everything they needed for life and godliness until they ate of that tree. They didn't need to eat of the tree. There's no reason for them because they had eternity. They had everything for food, everything they needed. 
the devil suggested otherwise that God was holding back and he wasn't. And Satan, Satan will mock us and condemn us when we do wrong or even for obeying God rather than listening to him. You see, the devil doesn't mind us being religious. He doesn't mind us being proud and self-righteous. He likes that. He likes to be proud of our achievements and of what we've done. He even doesn't mind us going to church. He doesn't mind us being nice to someone and helping someone now, now and again. As long as we aren't serious about in our pursuit of God. He don't want us denying ourselves and taking up our cross and following Christ. He don't want us reaching out to the lost and praying for them. He wants us to look after number one. Because Satan himself was an angel, a fallen angel, was proud, who thought he'd exalt himself to the place of God and he was cast out. And that's why he tempted Eve and Adam in the garden. And since then, that's all he does, tempt entice, suggest. You don't mind people being economical with the truth, diluting it, or twisting scripture, change, making changes and subtle, even as subtle as they are. He likes all that. Anything that stops people being serious about God. He likes false teachers telling us how to be blessed and prosperous. He likes them diluting the truth and telling us how to find our own righteousness rather than trusting in Jesus' righteousness, which is what we're meant to do. He says our sins are just mistakes, problems, glitches, habits. He even likes people singing and preaching anything as long as it's not in line with scripture. He doesn't like anyone speaking about sin and repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. He doesn't like anyone reading the world. He'd rather have someone there to buy their books and their tapes of what they say it says. And they usually twist scripture. Satan loves all that. Anything that is away and against the truth. It sounds like it's for the truth, but it's against it. Antichrist doesn't mean you're against Christ. It means it's instead of. And all these are substitutes. And obviously... There are people who are preaching the truth and we should be thankful and prayerful for them. You don't like anyone reaching to the lost, uh, praying for them or seeking and speaking the absolute truth of God's word. And why? Because Satan covers his ears when he hears the truth because, because especially of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, that we see as well in the revelation. It reminds me of his doom, his impending doom, and it's coming very soon. So we don't like to hear, that's why I like to hear anything else but that devil's happy with apostasy, creating other religions, creating cults, creating, well, any religion, because God doesn't want us to be religious. He wants us to be in relationship with him. That's what true Christian faith is. It's in relationship with God through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. It's not about being religious and earning our way to God. We cannot earn it. The devil's happy about apostasy cults, religions that deny the essential truth about Jesus, that deny that he is the Son of God, that he was eternally the Son and became flesh and died for your sins and for mine. He likes anything that denies that Jesus was perfect and sinless so we could be the sacrifice for sin. He's happy to exalt proud men, false teachers, prophets and apostles that deceive people. They're deceiving themselves, but they're deceiving a lot of other people as well, even robbing them of their money, telling them to give to their ministers rather than to their local church. We give to God through those that feed us the truth. If someone's not feeding you the right food, don't give to them. He likes people telling them that they're Christian. You don't need to change. 
God loves you the way you are. He knows how you feel. Yes, Jesus does know how we feel. But our lives are not based on our emotions and feelings, but on the truth. He does know you. He knows how you feel and one, give, one given day to another. He's the truth, not your feelings, not your emotional experiences. Jesus is the word for your life. He is the eternal word. Not His words cannot pass away. Born into sin, whatever sin it might be, and you're under God's wrath until you repent and put your faith in Jesus Christ. And seeker-sensitive churches are no solution to anything. They're like a plaster covering up a fatal wound. They're just pointless because you're never going to help someone who has got a wound if he's going to die. And sticking a plaster on it doesn't help anyone, certainly not the person who has a wound. That's why it is important to, to repent of our sin. That is a deadly wound, sin. And we've all suffered from it. But if we repent of our sin, trust Jesus as our Lord and Saviour, he will not only heal that deadly wound of sin, but he frees us from it so that we can live for him in Jesus' righteousness and not our own. There's only one gospel, one way, one truth, one life, and that is in Christ. All the Bible is about him. He's the Christ, anointed one, which also means in Hebrew, the Messiah, he's the Son of God, and the Son of Man, or one like a Son of Man, from Daniel chapter 7. He was eternally with the Father, he became human, he was fully God and fully human, he had two natures, and so he experienced true humanity. He wasn't Superman, where he could go without eating and sleeping and going to the toilet or anything else. He had to experience a full life of a human being because he was God, he was able and born miraculously through the Holy Spirit, he was able to resist all sin. Obviously, he would have died naturally, but he couldn't die and be the sacrifice for our sin if he had sinned. And he was betrayed and he was killed by religious people who were handing him over to the Romans to be killed. The Romans were very good at killing people and usually criminals. Jesus was not a criminal. Jesus was perfect and sinless so that he could be sacrificed for your sin. But he was accused of blasphemy because he was saying and doing things that only God can do. And the religious leaders wouldn't accept that Jesus was the Messiah. So they had him killed. He rose again. Death couldn't hold him because he was innocent. And he rose again from the tomb and appeared to his disciples before ascending to the Father. This is the grace of God in the true gospel. And anything else you hear is usually a false gospel. Gospels of prosperity and self-help are not the gospel. There is one gospel. But anyone who accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour, having repented, is born again. You must be born again. They accept that Jesus died for their personal sins on the cross and they hand their life over to him to make him Lord of their lives and to live for him. And he gives the Holy Spirit to enable us to live for him. So we are free from sin. We don't have a license to sin. We used to sin without a license. We don't have a license to sin anymore. We don't have that desire to sin anymore because we are living in gratitude to him. And anyone who wants to continue living in sin is a false convert. If they're trying to pretend to be Christian and live in their own life, you cannot do that. And God knows those who are true to him. And the great privilege is that we are able to share this gospel 
to so that I'm doing it now. You can do it in whatever way you want to speaking to people and tracks and anything else. There are many, so many ways to share his truth. And there are a lot of false teachers and prophets and teachers telling lies about the gospel, saying things like Jesus had to be born again. That is false. Talking about prosperity and blessing. You're blessed to be alive. You're blessed to have breath every day to praise him and live for him. You don't need to be blessed financially or this and that. God will look after you if you're trusting in him. So there is one gospel, not many. We are all under the wrath of God and we need Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. I took the idea from this from Galatians 1 where there were some Judaizers or Judaizers, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but they were trying to influence the Galatian believers and they 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 were Christian, new Christians, and these Judaizers were Jews trying to say that uh, being saved by grace isn't enough. You need to do this and do that. You need to be circumcised. You need to be following the laws of Moses, trying to add things on. And it was disturbing the Galatian church, and they were strange. And Paul was addressing them in his letter to the Galatians and saying, you know, what, what are you playing at? There's only one gospel. And if anyone preaches anything else, let them be accursed. An anathema, a cursed, set apart for destruction. And so he was trying to save them from that and to remind them again, our salvation is by faith and by the grace of God. It's not our works and it's not any works on top of the grace that we have in Christ. You must be born again. And that's the top and bottom of it there's one gospel and one gospel only and if you hear anything that is not in line with the word of god you should should call that person out you should if he is not speaking the truth of the gospel or dressing it up with different things you should have a word with him or if he's continuing in that you should leave that church where he's preaching very important that the gospel is correct. Like I said earlier, the devil likes anything that is counterfeit, anything that is false, anything that undermines the death and resurrection and the sinless life of Jesus Christ. Anything that undermines salvation or says that you have to earn your way. You cannot earn it. I will see you soon and we'll talk. And up more of God's word. Keep in the word, keep reading, keep praying, asking God for understanding on things that you don't.